Well, Nobo starter season is just about done. Uh, the bubble is moving on up the trail, kind of spread out a little bit, but it's coming in there, and the things that come along with the bubble are coming right there with it. Hey, y'all, I'm Ram Dino. I come to you here every week bringing you what's going on, the Appalachian Trail, what's going on out there, hiking in general. Uh, but mainly we're concentrating right now because this is through hiker season for the AT. That's where we're at right now. So we're all about building the hiker community and supporting the through hikers on the Appalachian Trail. So let's go ahead, find out those folks that have reported in to me what's going on with their hike out there on the trail. So we've got Hobear. He has started his flip-flop. And I always wonder with that name, Hobear, does that get confusing for him out there on the trail? If somebody in front of him sees a bear and they go, whoa, bear, whoa, bear, get back, get back, whoa, whoa, bear. Does he think they're calling him to camp? I don't know. Uh, but he did say that he was day two out of Harper's Ferry and fell and broke his nose. That looks painful. Uh, he took an early zero on day three to let the swelling go down. Smart. I think I would do the same. I might take a couple zeros. Uh, and he did say he's had rain every day since he's been out there. He met Slide Rule and Catherine, and he has made it past the Washington Monument on day three. Nichols, he passed the 600-mile mark, and he is heading on past Parisburg. Gray Dog, he is 10 miles uh, south of Fontana Dam when he reported in, so he should be probably there at Fontana now. I'm sure he is maybe even going uh, into the Smokies today. Chuck Howell and Bluegrass, they have made it through the Roan Mountain Highlands, my favorite section of the whole trail. Uh, they're taking a few days off there in Johnson City because Chuck had his ankle x-rayed and found out that he has a broken fibula, and he has been hiking on it for around 300 miles. So I don't know if that's therapy uh, or I'm not going to say what it might be. But anyway... Uh, get off the trail if you get hurt like that and you've got a constant pain. Somebody needs to look at it. But kudos to him for sticking sticking with it out there. Sweet Potato, she is past Big Bald and sent in this video of trail conditions at camp. Uh, and while it had a little bit of a snow shower there, and this was at Little Laurel Shelter. Uh, so that looked pretty chilly to wake up to in the morning. Fireplo has made it to Skyland Lodge and said that she saw her first two bears in Virginia and the deer, uh, she saw some of those, but she said the bears were close enough to where she could touch them. So I, that's just too dang close for me. I, I don't know about that. That's just too close. But she had met through hikers ready in Fortune, and she saw them again. She says pretty good, cool at night with the temperatures around 37 degrees. Sassafras Jim, he has made it through the Rhone. He's passing uh, through on top of Hump Mountain here and said the Rhone Mountains, uh, before he ducked into Mountain Harbor, he had been hitting some bad weather through them. He sends in this video. All right, this is Sassafras Jim with my good buddy passing through. We're on top of Hump Mountain, elevation 5,587 feet, up in the Rhone Mountains, enjoying some incredible views. Uh, tomorrow's weather's supposed to turn bad on us, but for today, we've got the wonderful day. Hope everybody's having a good one. Sass Frasty, I'm out. Triple One, he has made it through the Grayson Highlands and is past the 500, 500 mile mark and heading on towards Parisburg. Arkansas Hiker, he's made it to Neil's Gap and he said that the Hawks Mountain Shelter, there was about 30 hikers there, but there was only one person in the shelter. Noro is very much on everybody's mind. We'll mention that again here in just a, minute, a little bit. So it's very much on everybody's mind, so nobody is staying in the shelters like that around there. He sends in a video. Hi, Ram Dino. The Arkansas hiker coming to you from the top of Bud Mountain. The trail's been great. Uh, sunny the last two days. Pretty misty up here, no views, but I'm appreciating Mother Nature's air conditioning. Yesterday got pretty hot, close to 74 degrees, not counting the UVs. There's a couple areas heading out of... Uh, Hawk Mountain sheltered, long carries about four miles each. Uh, I carried uh, two liters to still run out, many hot hikers ran out. So be sure to look at your water sources and carry plenty of water. Appreciate everything you do. I'll see you down the trail. God bless you and God bless your channel. Sparrow and Michael, they have, Micah have made it to Hot Springs and Blue Birds, uh, she had gotten off trail because her ankle was at uh, a sprain pretty bad sprain on it but she's back on trail now she says it's healed and she's taking it uh nice and easy stick he is passing through parisburg here within the next day or so and he sends in this video 
Hey Ramdino, it is Dick the Eagle here. The highlight of my week was getting fed on Easter morning for breakfast by Fresh Ground, and he had Cadbury cream eggs on Easter. The other highlight was a starry night on top of Chestnut Knob. The stars were beautiful. The question mark of the week is why is there a plunger at the privy in Chestnut Knob? The low of the week was probably a rhododendron stealing my hat. <laughs> just today. Uh, low branches. Anyways, happy trails, y'all. Keep on moving. He said the trail north of Parrisburg has lots of blowdowns, particularly between miles 640 and 670. He said there's a lot of large, a couple large blowdowns through there that people are having to hike around and kind of making a new trail and stuff, and that gets to be an issue. A lot of blowdowns, you just can't hike right through. So uh, in any case, uh, just be careful when you're doing that. Uh, that's a good way to trip, fall, break an ankle, break a wrist, something like that. So be careful out there, guys. But he did say it is the worst he's seen since North Carolina. Master Helmet is through the Smokies and sends in this pitch of the conditions up there and this video. Hello, Ramdino. It's Mad Hermit checking in. It's Wednesday the 3rd, and uh, I'm between Derek Knob and Siler Bald shelters. It rained all night and rained all morning and got pretty cold. But uh, now it's quit raining, and uh, we're headed up over Clingman's Dome today and uh, trying to get to the Mount Collins shelter. So thanks for all you do. 5 and Chief, they have flipped up to Harper's Ferry and turned that into a flip-flop. And they stayed there at the Blackburn Trail Center. And this was sent in by Roll Tide. Roll Tide is the uh, caretaker there this year. And Roll Tide has been the caretaker for the past three years on the AT. Uh, so he uh, started out up in the Whites at the uh, not not Namaste Nauman campsite up there, and then he was in the Smokies last year as a Ridge Runner, and this year is at Blackburn Trail Center. So he sent this in update for Five O and Chief Keith Owens. He got started at Springer, and slow and steady they are north of Delvin, Virginia, which is uh, north of the Triple Crown area. They send in this video. Good morning, Randino. Great channel you got here, it's slow and steady here, of hiking with slow and steady on YouTube. Just a quick update, uh, this week was, it was a tough week, lots of freezing temperatures, some snow, some ice, uh, hail that is, rain, high, high winds, overcast a lot, but then yesterday knocked out the Virginia Triple Crown in one day, it was a 23 mile hike, which was uh, preceded by a 23 mile day the day before. Now today, just heading into uh, Daleville, Troutville area, Virginia, spending the night after a leisurely nine mile stroll into town and taking a zero tomorrow. But the weather is gorgeous today. So that's my update for the week. I'll try to give you some more updates in the weeks coming. Anyone wants to find me, look at it. Look me up on YouTube. Thanks, Ramdino. And Boora and Buttercup, they are north of the Cookie Lady, which is around mile marker 300. So some hikers we got that have gotten off trail this week, some of them permanently. Mountaineer, he said it's sad to report that he got off at Delville, Virginia. He had an old health problem that came back and was just stressing him out too much, worrying about it. So he just had to listen to his old body and he pulled the plug. So he's not a happy camper about that right now, but... It's better if you're if you're not enjoying your hike and you're too much stressed out about anything in particular and you just can't enjoy your hike, you either need to get off trail and take some time off or just get off trail and uh, maybe do section hikes or something. Uh, but in any case, uh, Mountaineer will miss you. Lisa Wellington, she got off because of balance issues and she had really just gotten started. Patches and Silent Bob, they got off the trail just due to they felt like they needed to be home. You'll recall that I met Patches and Silent Bob while I was out there looking for Sadie uh, up around Max Patch, and they had made it to Hot Springs, and I feel like that they probably made it on through Grayson Highlands, but uh, Patches' wife's father had passed away and so recently, and so he feels like that he just needs to be home. That could be one of the reasons. Don't know, but that's just my speculation. But anyway, they are off trail. 007, he had to pull off trail right before Franklin for a leg issue. He thought it was a knee, but it turns out he had a strained quad, so he's going to take some a couple of weeks off down in Florida and come right back. Uh, the only issue with coming back after you take a couple of weeks off is now you got to get your trail legs back up underneath you. But anyway, uh, you got you can't some things you just can't work out on the trail. You got to go home. 
So registration, so we are somewhere now for folks that have actually stepped off uh, at Amicola Falls State Park or Springer around 2098. The data on that is may not be entirely accurate, and this is why. Um, so I have recently found out that the, uh, the section hikers are also being registered down in Amicola Falls State Park, and that was not something that I was aware was going on. Uh, back last year and in subsequent years, registrations were done on a paper logbook. Uh, and here's what it looked like. People would send me those logbooks, and I really only looked at the logbooks to kind of get a general idea of what pack weights were. Uh, but you'll see here that it says through hiker, uh, and it's no bow through hiker. So this through hiker, full stop, not a section hiker. Everybody's destination is, is Mount Katahdin. And it would have the number there next to it that was pre-printed on there. And so that was what would go on their hiker tag. Well, it seems that with the electronics, there's a possibility, and I've got one of the folks down there, this my contact uh, down at Amico Falls State Park is looking into this for me, but it looks like with the electronic uh, that they're doing now and no paper, they're all doing it on iPads or a computer, that uh, they may be mixing in the section hikers with it. Uh, I have had another report down there from Ron of, uh, of the Appalachian Trail Shuttle, and he indicated he's seen section hikers that have numbers on their tag. So that's kind of confusing the issue. I'm trying to get more information out there for that, but that data is definitely changed from what it was when it was a paper tag. So I've also got an email into the ATC to ask them about that, if there's an accurate way to determine how many through hikers. Don't have a problem with section hikers. I'm one of them. Uh, but the data that I'm putting out here is I'm trying to get the data just for the through hikers. So don't know if that's going to be possible or not. Uh, they probably haven't got all the kinks worked out. Maybe that's something in the future about the ATC actually sharing how many folks have stepped off weekly. Don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but we do know what the registrations are. So registrations and folks that have actually stepped off uh, the trail and stepped off on their hike or for their hike are different. Uh, so you can go and register online, but never start your hike. And if you don't pull your registration or, or cancel it, then it, it stays on there. And the ATC doesn't know if you don't check in at Alamacola Falls State Park, you may just go right to Springer. Uh, and so they don't know if that's legitimate or not. Uh, so the registrations are this week we had a, we're at uh, an increase of 161 over last week, no bow. So we're at 3,504. No bow, and then flip floppers. We went up to 166. That's three additional hikers, and nine additional sobo to 109. So we have gone up a total 173 hiker registrations to 3,779, up from 3,606 from last week. So I haven't gone through this whole list here to see how those numbers crunch out. There's just you know every day has a has a number on it and I just don't have time to add all those up. Somebody out there has the time to do that, then please by all means go and do that. But otherwise I don't have the time to add all that up to see if today, uh, being Sunday the eighth, those registrations moving forward, if if we're gonna use all of those three thousand seven hundred and seventy nine, and we'll probably have some additional ones of those as well. Uh, so just to give you kind of an indication of where we were last year, so this year we're at 3,779. Last year we were at 3,198 on this date last year. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of where we are, and that's why I'm wondering if that data on the register, people who have actually stepped off is incorrect. Uh, we're definitely past the prime time of NOBO season starting, so uh, there will be less and less people starting, less and less hikers starting from here on out. Right now, I'm calculating the bubble being somewhere uh, between the Fontana and, and spread out between Fontana and Hot Springs. A lot of people in the Smokies right now coming through there. Uh, the data on this heat map was actually from 2018, so that's six years ago. So you kind of have to interpolate a little bit just based upon that uh, how much it has changed on where the registrations are. Uh, and we'll talk about that in, in another video coming up now. But we're definitely past primetime season for uh, the Nobo Bubble starting. And of course, with the Nobo Bubble moving up, uh, upstream there, up the trail, 
uh, then it brings with it certain things, and one of those things is Noro. So we've talked about the norovirus in a little bit. Uh, I'll have a link at the end of this video where you can go and uh, that I put out a video about the norovirus. You can go and check out a lot of information about that. Um, and then there's hikers in hostels and shuttle drivers all up down the trail. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you could tell me when you know Nora is hitting your area uh, and when it's kind of when you feel like it's peaked and you're no longer seeing Nora virus cases up there, particularly hostel owners. Occasionally, hostels have to shut down to do a deep cleaning because there's been so many Nora virus cases up there. Uh, they've had to shut down in hot springs uh, and in, in other places as well. So um, not sure if they've ever shut down in Damascus. I would think so, but maybe not. But hostel owners, get in touch with me. Let me know. I'd love to have that information to get out there to folks. So uh, on my registration list, so as you know, I have a uh, Ramdino's uh, hiker support list, and that's basically a... Uh, just a clearing sheet, clearing house where people can put their name and their social media and then you, the hiker community, can go out there and support them through their social media. Uh, so uh, the, the through hikers, they have access to that, put themselves on that. And right now we're somewhere over 200 that have listed themselves on that. Uh, the link, if you want to put yourself on it, is down below. It's for Nobo, Flip Floppers, and Sobo. Uh, that's down below as well as you're part of the hiker community and you want to know who's out there and who to support and who's got social media, that link is down be below as well. So the folks we got starting on that list next week, we've got Hill Dog, and Hill Dog actually hiked last year or attempted to hike last year. Purple Lotus, Nina, The Remnant, Stretch, Ninja, Chase and Atypical, Spencer Van Nest, Miracle Miranda, and Randy Gardner. Those are all folks on our list that are starting uh, this upcoming week. So go and support those folks. Uh, give them a out of boy, out of girl, out of they, all the way throughout their hike. I know that there are times on the trail when they really need that and, and need for folks just to get behind them up there. So appreciate that. Speaking of support, I want to thank everybody out there that supports me with your comments and your subscriptions and your thumbs up. And especially thank you for the support, the, the comments you've left. Uh, about Sadie and supporting the search for Sadie uh, and Bright Eyes and her search for her beloved Sadie. Uh, thank you for all those people that are praying out there, sending good vibes, whatever it is you're doing. Thank you very much for that. Uh, probably 98% of you uh, have had nothing but good things and, and, and good wishes out there. And there's other ways that folks support me, so I've got uh, super thanks, and I want to Give a great thank you to some folks who sent in super thanks. One of them was the Arkansas hiker, and he's actually out there on trail right now. So thanks a lot. And then Milan Busick, I probably butchered that name. I apologize for that, but thank you very much for sending in those super thanks. We also had a new Patreon member this week, and that was John Blankenship. Thanks a lot for becoming a Patreon member. Uh, and then, uh, of course, y'all support me through my merchandise store. Got some really cool merchandise out there. One of the really cool things is i got a dry fit shirt with a blaze on the front. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, I wore it uh, while I was on trail and actually had some folks comment on it and some other folks turned around and almost started following me. So, uh, but, and, you know, how you follow the white blaze, right? But in any case, uh, so appreciate all that. Uh, got some stickers out there. Uh, that you can, if you're following some hikers and you want to send them a care package or something, send them a couple of these stickers. That's pretty cool. Uh, and some coffee mugs. But anyway, thanks a lot for you guys that support me through that. Uh, greatly appreciate all that support uh, that everybody gives me and gives this channel. And it just helps me to go out and support the through hikers and, and support the, the hiking community in general. Uh, Sadie, by the way, is still missing. So we are needing boots on the ground up at Max Patch to help search, uh, help search some back uh, trails and just some other trails to go back and look over those again. Um, we need folks that if you can't be there because of the, of the distance or, or you just can't be there, what, whatever, you can go online and be looking for Sadie in the various forums that are Facebook forums and uh, animal shelter forums, those things. Those would be greatly appreciated for you to look for those and for you for you to post a picture here of Sadie as well as a picture of this um, poster that we've got up for Sadie up for there. All that would be very helpful. If you have a tracker dog or know if somebody's got a tracker dog and would be willing to go up to Max Patch, that would be awesome for you to go up there and help her do that. Uh, she has a 
a sleeping bag for your dog to imprint on that was Sadie's and Sadie's alone. Uh, and it's in a plastic trash bag now. So that is something that your tracker dog can imprint on and go. And if Sadie's in the area, I'm sure your dog would be able to find her. So that would be awesome. Uh, anybody that can do that. So thanks a lot. Uh, and I appreciate everybody keeping this in the forefront out there of everybody's mind till we bring Sadie home. Whispers, our northern correspondent, he said with the past couple weeks of weather, they've had some pretty significant uh, dumps up there of fresh snow in the white, uh, but it's mostly uh, been kind of fluffy snow, so it's blown in, blown off of the peaks and stuff, and mainly down in the woods and below tree line and everything, but, but they have had some significant stuff. Don't know if there's any sobos out there. We're not tracking any sobos right now. The ones that we were tracking got off trail just due to some the bad conditions. Uh, but, um, but in any case, uh, they did get some more in the whites, but, uh, that's probably going to be short lived up there. He did say, he did remind us that the Vermont mud season has started. Uh, so probably nobody's up in Vermont right now. The flip floppers are, that are starting now are mostly starting from Harper's Ferry. Uh, but there are trails, not the Appalachian trail, but there are trails in Vermont that actually get closed during the mud season because it just gets so freaking muddy up there. Uh, and that's usually around uh, now until uh, late May is when the mud season is uh, up there in uh, Vermont. So as some of you know, we've got a, a father and daughter pair that are through hiking that are taking a Sharpie and signing their name and writing stuff on shelter walls everywhere. Now normally I don't, I'm not calling these people out by name. Most people on the trail right now know who I'm talking about. Uh, that is not in keep of leave no trace, and there's nothing that I, well, there's a lot of things I, that I don't like. But one of the things I really don't like is going into a shelter and seeing a bunch of graffiti. There's log books, you want to sign that, sign that. There, a lot of shelters actually have a graffiti board that you can sign on. Sign on that, but don't sign on the side of the shelter wall. There's lots of reasons for that. Hiker, other hikers don't want to see that. Uh, and then also somebody's got to go in there and clean that off, sand it off, spray paint it off, or, or paint it off, or whatever they do to make it look more natural. But that's just ridiculous for somebody to do that. So you know who I'm talking about out there. If you do, uh, send me, first off, we need a video of them actually doing it. And it probably needs to be that of the father doing it because the child is too young uh, to for any kind of judicial action to be brought against her uh but the father's not uh and there are rangers that are out there trying to catch them trying to get witnesses uh but if you got a video uh or you're in the shelter and they're and and they're doing it then please take a video of that uh send that to me uh tell me their location uh and uh because there are the authorities are out there trying to track them down and trying to get witnesses to do that um uh, I would like to know that so that I could be part of stopping this. This is ridiculous. Um, and sorry, that's just my rant. Don't like people marking up the shelters. And so we talked a little bit earlier about Noro. So my one of my resources down there in Georgia indicated that they are still evacuating hikers from Hawk Mountain Shelter uh, with the Norovirus. So uh, Hawk Mountain Shelter is like 12 miles in. So that's one of the first shelters that a lot of people go to. So they're still, to this day, with the norovirus getting people out of Hawk Mountain Shelter. And I'm sure it's moving on up the trail as well. So Georgia still has a noro issue going on down there. Everybody use soap, wash your hands, make sure that uh, you're not eating out of each other's food bag, uh, and uh, just let's try to stop it before it becomes a, a, a really huge problem, which it's actually already getting there. But but let's, let's try to stop it before it moves on in and shuts down hostels and stuff on up the trail. I'll be going out on a section hike this coming weekend. Uh, so I'll be hiking up um, around the uh, James River crossing area. If anybody wants to come out and hike with me, that's great. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing hikers and every, everybody out there on the trail. So I do these section hikes. If you're going to be doing a section hike this year, uh, I've got most of my section hikes all the way from Springer to where I'm at right now, uh, just short of James River, as well as uh, Vermont and Massachusetts. So you can go to this video right here and check them out. Over here, this video has got uh, 
there's a video I did about Nora this year. You can go and check that out if you got need any information on that. Folks, I appreciate all your support. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here.